as promised, today I'm going to share with you all some of the moisturizers that I personally have been using a lot in the past six months and really loving and that I plan to continue using in the upcoming winter months. Um, this is a follow-up to Friday's Q&A in which I talked about kind of how to moisturize the body. Um, and in that video, if you missed it, I talked about some of the salient features of moisturizers and things that I look for. Um, but just to review, things that I look for in a moisturizer, I like to select moisturizing creams that are thick and come out of a tub. And um, I uh, like to select that type of moisturizer because the way that I use it and the way that I, I advocate using moisturizing creams is when I get out of the shower, I apply them directly to wet skin and this slows down transepidermal water loss and locks in moisture properly, okay, versus toweling off the water and then trying to slap on a film of moisturizing cream. It just doesn't work effectively that way. Um, so that's one thing that I look for in a dry skin uh, kind of arsenal. And the other thing that I look for to have on hand in my bag of tricks, a thick and greasy ointment, okay? Ointments are very, very occlusive and they really, really seal in, um, seal in the water, okay? Um, ointments are things like Vaseline, Aquaphor. They're really, really, really thick and they will actually um, prevent 98% of transepidermal water loss. But because they're so occlusive, people don't really like to use them all over the body. They're kind of hard to spread all over the body. And if you have acne prone skin, then using a thick ointment all over the body can actually sometimes precipitate a flare of acne or acne like eruptions in those areas. Because it is so occlusive, it kind of, um, you know, can, can be a little bit too much. Um, but these are not pore clogging uh, um, ingredients necessarily or, you know, things to be be terrified about clogging your pores, particularly on the body, okay? So that's the, the second component that I look for. And then the third component that I look for uh, to have, the, the third, I guess, sort of gun, if you will, is to have a lighter lotion that I can reapply throughout the day to my skin um, that's not as thick and greasy and it's just a little bit easier to absorb into my skin and rub into my skin. And lotions are things that um, are a little bit more watery. They tend to come in pumps or in tubes um, and rather than tubs. And they um, have a little bit more water in them so they don't seal in your water as well, but they're kind of good maintenance, okay? So I, I like to have a lotion as well. And then I like to use a variety of kind of humectant type things. Humectants are things that are sort of gel-like substances and they glom onto water molecules and they can really kind of help uh, slow down transepidermal water loss uh, and uh, they can kind of boost your moisturizers, if you will. Um, I'll talk about the ones that I'm using on my body, but on my face, uh, I have used uh, Neutrogena Hydra Boost to do this and the Hotalabo Super Plumping Gel Cream. Today's video, I'm exclusively talking about moisturizers for the body. Um, a humectant uh, is basically something that's kind of a jelly-like substance and gloms onto water molecules and by itself isn't a fantastic moisturizer, but uh, in conjunction with a good moisturizing routine can kind of boost things up a little bit. So I, I sort of like to have that as well. Um, I do not moisturize with oils um, on their own because as I mentioned in Friday's video, um, oils just really are not fantastic moisturizers. They're very slippery um, and they, um, they slide off of the skin so they don't really lock in the water very well. They can soften the skin, they can make the, the skin feel more supple. Um, they're good adjuvants, but to, to use one exclusively um, just kind of seems like a lot of trouble to me, honestly, so I don't bother with it. Um, they're not necessarily bad and they're oftentimes present in a lot of moisturizing creams and I think that's a better way to employ them in your moisturizing, in your moisturizing routine than on their own, but um, some people just really, really enjoy using them and I can see why they do soften the skin. Things that I avoid um, as best I, as I can, although it is difficult, um, and I really, really push that people avoid these ingredients is fragrance. Um, and essential oils because those are the almost like the number one problematic uh, ingredient in moisturizers and skincare. 
um, because fragrance is, uh, you know, oftentimes derived from plants. And despite marketing, you know, I, I say this all the time, but I'm just going to keep repeating it because every every day I get new new folks viewing. But despite marketing, natural ingredients are not necessarily safe and or effective. And plants, in reality, you know, plants and, and herbs and fruits and things like that, really are not great on your skin, okay? Your, your skin has its own little circulating immune system, and guess what? It doesn't like it doesn't like having having salad works all over. So I try and avoid uh, as many botanic oils, essential oils, fragrance, both synthetic and natural fragrance as possible. I, I um, do not avoid parabens in moisturizers because I do not have an allergy to parabens. Parabens are safe. There's no evidence of any harm to human health with them. I do not avoid them and I don't really see the reason to. Um, people will disagree with me on that, and so it's fine to avoid parabens. In my mind, the only reason to avoid parabens is if you are one of those few uh, people who have developed an allergy to parabens. And I like dimethicone in a moisturizer. It's fantastic. Um, has been in, in, in existence in moisturizers for eons. It's a fantastic uh, moisturizing ingredient. It uh, you know, softens the skin. It does not clog pores. Poor clogging is really a consumer perceived outcome that is very, very, very difficult and nearly impossible to objectively quantify. So, you know, I really, really struggle with this whole pore concern and pore clogging because there's really not much objective information I can provide you guys with that. I do my best to make recommendations that I do not believe should flare somebody's acne for sure and should not clog pores, but there's always gonna be someone who says that that broke me out, that clogged my pores, and I, you know, I. I, I make the recommendations as best I'm able, uh, but do know that there's really not much objective objective uh, information that I can provide you guys with regards to, to poor clogging ingredients. Um, so I don't avoid dimethicone. It is great. It is safe. I do not avoid um, petrolatum. I love petrolatum, and it has been around forever and a day. It is super, super safe and very occlusive uh, in, in ointments, so it is wonderful for um, targeting super rough and dry spots using that ingredient. So I don't avoid um I don't avoid uh, petrolatum at all in my moisturizers. And uh, ingredients that I happen to think are good in moisturizers um, include ceramides. Ceramides are a component of our natural skin lipid barrier. They're uh, the most abundant and they can become deficient with age uh, and people with a tendency towards dry skin. And we know that putting them on the skin kind of helps our skin make more of them. So I like to get a, at least to have a few moisturizers that contain ceramides as ingredients. Um, I also am a fan of niacinamide in my moisturizers. Uh, this is an ingredient that I will talk about uh, in detail in uh, uh, another video this week. But do know that niacinamide uh, has good evidence for both dry skin and, and eczema, as well as for acne, believe it or not, and uh, oiliness and shininess. The other moisturizing ingredients that I like are shea butter. Um, I find it's very nice, as well as uh, colloidal oatmeal. And so those are, those are moisturizing ingredients that I like to use. Um, but plain moisturizers with none of these ingredients are also just as good. My moisturizing cream of choice, my, you know, kind of ride or die holy grail that I, I'm now on my, like, uh, third tub of this, um, this year, um, is the CeraVe Moisturizing Cream. Okay, I happen to really, really love this. Um, it is fragrance-free, and it contains ceramides, and it is fantastic applied to wet skin out of the shower. Okay, I will also list in the description box some other moisturizing creams that I think are just as good as this. I don't happen to be using currently because I'm so enamored with CeraVe. No, they don't sponsor me or even know I exist. I just really love them as a personal eczema sufferer. Um, they, their products have really, really helped me quite a bit. Okay, so I, I do really love this, but I will say that um, Cetaphil has a fantastic moisturizing cream that is very good. 
Um, and um, I don't believe it contains ceramides, but it is very good. It is very moisturizing. I will list it down below in the description box. Um, another one that also got me through some tough times with my eczema and I am not currently using is the Vanny Cream Moisturizing Skin Cream here. I've got a little sample of it. This comes in a tub and it's fragrance free and um, is wonderful. It doesn't contain ceramides, but this is, if you're somebody who has sensitive skin or skin al allergies to a lot of cosmetics and skincare products and you're trying to figure out what you're allergic to, but you need a moisturizer to kind of get you through that period, this is a great one on, uh, for the body. I really love it. It is really, really, really wonderful. Um, so another one that I am have really been loving, I really loved it this summertime and um, I finished a tub of it and now I'm getting into a little smaller sample here are the Aveeno eczema therapy balms okay they've got one that they market to babies and one that they market to adults they're pretty much the exact they're the exact same product just when one has sweet little stars on it um, it is nice and uh, goes on the skin really well um, this is a great one for people who cannot stand moisturizers if you put this on to wet skin um, you completely don't even realize that you have it on there it does a really really phenomenal job it's not messy it's very very soothing I would say it's a little bit more more on the pricey side but this is really a fantastic product I really enjoy it uh, on my body I found that it uh, was far it absorbed a, a lot quicker than even CeraVe it does not have ceramides in it but it is colloidal oatmeal based and really really phenomenal fragrance free and you know this happens to not have parabens if, if you're concerned about that and you're avoiding it so I'm not sure if Aveeno is available to you in your country I think it is a little bit more international than CeraVe I know CeraVe is not available Available to a lot of you all but um, that's why I mentioned both the Avino ones which I love and the Cetaphil one that I love I'm pretty sure Cetaphil is available in, in Europe um, comment below um, but um, I haven't really found online anything that I could can uh, identify that would be available more globally in the the tub form as a moisturizing cream okay um, but getting into lotions, I've been trying out, I got this on iHerb and I really have been enjoying this. This is the Earth Science, um, can you see this? Um, Multi-Therapy Ceramide Healthy Skin Lotion. This product, um, for those of you guys who are concerned from kind of an ethical, I guess, standpoint, this product is cruelty-free and vegan. I like cruelty free though, and I will say that CeraVe, <clears throat> while, not, while they're products I can't say are vegan, they are cruelty free. Okay, so, um, but getting back into it, I've really, really been enjoying this Earth Science Multi-Therapy Ceramide Healthy Skin Lotion. I'll list it down below. I got it on iHerb. Um, and so far, this is the best, like, cruelty-free vegan skincare product uh, in terms of a body moisturizer that I have found. It doesn't have fragrance in it like most of them do. It doesn't have essential oils in it. And it's very moisturizing. It's got uh, glycerin, shea butter, which is fantastic. Fantastic. And then it's got a variety of, of, of plant-derived oils and plant-derived ceramides that are pretty good. Um, and you all are always jazzed about rosehip oil. This happens to have it in it. Um, that seems to be fine. Um, can't find any reports of adverse or beneficial outcomes of using rosehip oil in the medical literature, but I believe you guys that you really like using it as a moisturizer, so I think it's good to keep using, and this product has it in it. Um, it has a little bit of, um, what was the other thing in this that I liked? Oh, I, I mentioned the plant-derived ceramides. Oh, it also has aloe in it, but aloe vera is kind of the uh, moisturizing ingredient that everybody loves, I, I feel like, so he's good in here. I really like this one as and this is a lotion so I reapply this throughout the day this goes on to wet skin very well also so I've also used it directly out of the shower and I really like it in that manner um, this is a good one and I um, recommend it uh, I feel really confident in it a moisturizing lotion that I was a little bit um, not too happy with when I first tried it out um, but I have become a huge fan of is this CeraVe Eczema Soothing Creamy Oil. Okay, this is kind of a more water, this is somewhere on the spectrum of watery lotion to, to thicker occlusive. 
Um, and the reason I didn't like this when I first tried it is I was putting it onto wet skin and it really does not go, it really doesn't mix with water very well at all. It is very, very um, oil predominant, um, I would say. And so how I've been using this and loving it is reapplying moisturizers to the body throughout the day. This actually got me through. Recently, I had a flare of my eczema while I was in uh, the hill country, uh, precipitated by that... Um, uh, precipitated by both the climate as well as that uh, Trader Joe's Nourish soap that was anything but nourishing. It, I just didn't agree with me. Um, this really got me over the hump. At first we didn't get along when I put it on in the shower, but then after a few days of using it, I really started liking it. And I've been using it now for a few, and I've been using it now for a few days and really, really liking it. It's got um, avocado oil in it. It's got grapeseed oil um, and it's got safflower seed oil. This has niacinamide in it. So what I'm saying about this product that I think uh, would resonate with some of you all <clears throat> is that it's great um, to keep your body moisturized throughout the day during winter. And because it has a niacinamide in it, I think this would be good for folks with, <laughs> despite the fact that it's, that it's oil-based, all right, and that may terrify you, I think this would be really good for people who have kind of oily, acne-prone skin on the body because of that niacinamide component. I think it would actually be good. Um, and it's got ceramides in it. So this has a lot of good ingredients in it and no fragrance or garbage. Really, um, I think they're, they're doing a nice job with this this one, and I like it. The other product that I recently have, uh, you know, brought back out and really been loving is the Aveeno Skin Relief Moisture Repair Cream. Here I have a sample of it. This is a phenomenal lotion um, that contains both the colloidal oatmeal that Aveeno is so... Um, well known for, as well as ceramides, okay? So this is a great one for reapplying throughout the day. It goes on very nicely. Um, it's a little bit thicker than um, like that oil that I, that CeraVe eczema soothing oil I just showed you. Um, it's really nice. So I've really been enjoying that one as well. So some moisturizing lotions that I um, think are maybe a little bit more readily available to you uh, come from, um, <clears throat> come from both Eucerin and Curel, okay? Eucerin makes some really, really phenomenal ceramide-based lotions that are, uh, I would say, on board with CeraVe. You know, if you can get Curel, excuse me, if you can get Eucerin in your country, um, that is one that I would strongly encourage you to get your hands on. Um, they've got some phenomenal ceramide-based base moisturizers, which I will list down below. They come in a big pump, um, and I think they're fantastic. So I will list those down below in the description box. Curel also makes some phenomenal lotions for the body that are fragrance-free um, that are also great. And I, I believe Curel is um, also more readily available to you guys in Asia. Comment below, but I know they have almost their own, I know that Japan has its own version of Curel. I haven't tried any of the Japanese Curel products, but the American ones are really good. And um, I think that they they are available uh, more globally to you guys in other countries. So I will list those down below in the description box. I have used them before and I really enjoy them. I pointed some of them out in my recent video where I toured through the skincare <laughs> section of Walmart and you all seem to enjoy that. So. So as far as humectants to the body, I have um, been playing around with aloe vera um, on its own. Aloe vera on its own is sort of a humectant, okay? It's kind of jelly-like. I mean, we all know what aloe gel looks like, right? Um, and I've really been enjoying this uh, Nature's Republic aloe vera soothing gel. Um, unfortunately, most aloe vera gels do have fragrance in them. And so what I will say about these products, um, I really like this one by Skin Food, or sorry, I really like this one by Nature's Republic. Um, I um, have also tried the Holica Holica one and I liked that one as well. Um, but these are not phenomenal moisturizers on their own because um, you know the gel stuff, what happens is the uh, water starts to evaporate. It doesn't really provide a long lasting sealed in moisturization to your skin. 
but it does kind of help hold on to water. And the way I personally have been loving using this is as a shave cream to my legs, okay? Um, shaving the legs in the wintertime, if you do not uh, follow that up with moisturizer like ASAP, uh, that can really just precipitate uh, dry, ashy skin during the winter months. So you definitely want a good moisturizing based uh, shaving routine down. And I would say shaving with aloe vera gel and then following it up with, um, you know, like eczema, this eczema um, therapy balm or the CeraVe moisturizing cream or some sort of ceramide based ideally or at least fragrance free plain moisturizer immediately to wet skin when you get out. That is a really great uh, body shaving routine. I can't attest to using this on the face however. I imagine it would work relatively well there, but do know it does have quite a bit of fragrance in it. So if you're allergic to fragrance, then that would be a um, kind of problem area for you. Then another one that I um, will talk about that's not really a humectant, but um, I don't know how you would classify this. This is one of those leave on things that I've tried in the past and I really like and do recommend is the Curel Hydrotherapy Wet Skin Moisturizer. I think this is better than the Jergens one. Um, it contains ceramides and uh, you know, this is designed to be put on in the shower to wet skin. I've used this as a shaving um, lotion as well and it works very well in that that way doesn't clog up the razor um, so this would be another good one to come in with you know in the shower you shave your legs uh, you know using some sort of shave gel I've been using aloe and then to uh, just immediately combat the post shave with this I think would be a really really a good approach um, this is nice it blends into the skin really really quickly while you're in the shower and uh, contains ceramides I um, really like it. it also has dimethicone which is a fantastic moisturizer it does however unfortunately have fragrance in it um, it has eucalyptus in it which is fragrance and it has orange peel oil in it which is fragrance so this is not fragrance free, but um, it is nice. Uh, so I don't know that this is worth the price point. It's one of the pricier products that Curiel offers, but the aesthetics are such that I think uh, you know people might like it in the way that I just mentioned. And then I don't have anything new that I'm using as far as ointments to particularly rough, dry areas of the body. Um, I've always used the CeraVe Healing Ointment. Uh, it lasts me forever. I strongly, strongly recommend this if you can get your hands on it. If you can't, uh, Vaseline is, works just as well. Aquaphor works pretty well as well. <laughs> Um, do know that Aquaphor contains lanolin in it, which is derived from sheep's fleece. So if you're vegan or, you know, kind of going down the cruelty-free path, uh, Aquaphor is not going to be something you, you want to use. And if you are allergic to lanolin and allergies to lanolin can and do occur, then you want to avoid Aquaphor. But otherwise, it is great. And the other one that I love is Vanny Ply, um, which is another petrolatum-based product by the same maker as Vanny Cream here. Um, and then the one that you just can't go wrong with ever is Vaseline ointment. So those particular ointments are really occlusive and great for like a patch of really, really dry, itchy, inflamed skin. So yeah, that's kind of all of the moisturizers that I have in my, um, you know, arsenal here that I wanted to share with you guys. I hope that it was helpful and kind of discussing their salient features, what I look for, what I look to avoid, namely fragrance and um, essential oils. And uh, yeah, comment below on, you know, the availability of these to you in your country. Uh, I know the majority of my viewers are US based. I am US based, that's what I'm most familiar with, but I prefer uh, to be able to recommend products to a broad audience. Um, so please, please educate me on what uh, drugstore, affordable skincare products, not like expensive stuff, because I don't ever want to recommend that, but affordable products in your country that are in your drugstores, uh, if these are not, are, are not readily available. Um, many of these are I get on iHerb, which does ship internationally, and I've been really happy with. So, um, including CeraVe is often available on iHerb. But since I've been recommending it, and you guys have been watching, uh, they've been selling out pretty quickly. So I don't know iHerb. You better kick up your stockpile. <laughs> So yeah, I hope you all found this video helpful. If you did and you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.